evening to one and all present here and thank you very much uh, joseph sir for this wonderful opportunity to meet the entire friends in psychology fraternity and now i'm going to just share about the scope of psychology yeah hello everybody i'm priya mahesh i'm assistant professor and head of the department of psychology working at mera school of social work and my topic today is the scope of psychology and i guess it, now psychology has become a very popular discipline and everybody wants to know more about psychology so let me give a clear picture what is the definition meaning of psychology and what are its scope of psychology and what are what are the different branches available in psychology and what are the misconceptions about psychology and finally what can be done to be a psychologist so let me just tell you the word, meaning and definition of psychology the word psychology has its origin from two greek words psyche and logos which is psyche means soul and logos means study so literally psychology means the study of soul or psyche science of soul i know we, we all know the symbol of psychology as it is seen in this so basically psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes Behavior includes all of our outward and overt reactions, such as verbal and facial expressions and movement. Mental processes refers to the mental processes refers to all our internal covert activity of our mind, as thinking, feeling, remembering. So it is it is actually a scientific study, since people say it is a study of mind and behavior. and finally what is psychology psychology is defined as a scientific study of human mind and its function especially those affective behavior in a given context so what are the goals of psychology so we all we all know psychology have when when we say i'm doing psychology the very first question people ask is do you do you know what i think right now so i guess everybody would have come across this particular question right but that is not our goal of psychology the main four goals of psychology is to first describe the human behavior explain the human behavior predict the human behavior and also to understand the mental processes of others describing a behavior cognition is the very first goal of psychology because in with that with the researchers enable the general laws of human behavior psychology aims to be able to predict future behavior from the findings of empirical research and if a prediction is not confirmed then the explanation is based on my need to be right so basically psychology has described explained and made predictions about behavior changing or controlling a behavior can be attested so it basically to to describe to understand to control the behavior rather than thinking what the other person is thinking right now so what is the scope of psychology the scope of psychology actually has a very wide scope and here are a few of the sub fields of psychology the first main in, in the very first important sub field of psychology is psychological psychology that is the most fundamental senses we all know human beings are biological organisms and physiological functions are the structures of body work together to influence our behavior biopsychology or physiological psychology is a branch that specializes in the area and biopsychologists they examine the way in which specific sites in the brain which are related to disorder or if they may try to determine how our sensations are related to our behavior so this is the very first the important sub field of psychology and we all know personality right personality psychology is very very fascinating branch of psychology because this this helps to explain both the consistency and change in a person's behavior over time from birth to end of life and which is influenced by the parents sibling playmate school school society and also culture because whatever is that people have their consistency and distinctiveness in their behavior pattern and that is what we study in the personality psychology it also studies the individual traits the individual traits that differentiate the behavior from one person from 
from that of other person and the third field sub field of psychology is developmental psychology here the here the studies are with respect to how people grow and change throughout their life from prenatal stages to childhood after that they enter the adulthood and to the old age developmental psychologists work in a variety of settings like colleges schools healthcare centers business centers government and non profit organization they also very much involved in study in studies of the disturbed children and advising parents about helping such children we may basically talk about the developmental disorders of the early childhood and the next sub field of psychology is health psychology which explores the relationship between the psychological factors and physical alignment and disease Health psychologists focus on health maintenance and promotion of behaviors related to good health such as exercise, health habits, and discouraging unhealthy behavior like quitting smoking, alcoholism, drug abuse, etc. Health psychologists work in healthcare settings and also in colleges and universities where they even do research. They analyze and also improve improve the healthcare system. to formulating various healthcare policies so that the behavior is altered in order to promote a happy healthy living and an next sub field of psychology we call it a clinical psychology where this is one of the very fascinating sub field of psychology because when i ask my students many people say they want to be a clinical psychologist yeah because it's quite interesting because it deals with the assessment and intervention of abnormal behavior so at at some observe and believe psychological disorders arise from a person's unresolved conflicts and unconscious motives there may we actually get all this from court theory other maintains that some of these patterns are merely learned responses which can be unlearned with the learning training Still, others contend with the knowledge of thinking that there are biological basis to certain psychological dis- disorders, especially the most serious one. Because in in that the the we cannot come to a conclusion because we need to take up the history and also do the appropriate diagnostic measures to rule out what is the particular disorder is all about, so that an appropriate intervention strategies can be planned in order to. in order to maintain the maintain the health or the all the maintain health health of that particular person clinical psychologists are always employed in hospitals clinics and private practice they often work closely with other specialized specialized specialists in the field of mental health so i guess we have heard a lot about counseling psychology there's no dr uma ma'am describe what is the need of counseling psychology and what is Scope and what have to be done to be a counseling psychologist. What are the skills we needed? I guess I'm just touching it because this is also a sub field of the psychology. This I mean, this focuses primarily on the educational, social, and career adjustmental problems when compared to the clinical psychology sub. The so counseling psychologists advise students on effective study habits, kinds of job they might be suited for, provide health concern with mind problems of social nature. and then the healthy lifestyle economic and also emotional adjustment they make use of tests to measure attitude interests and personality characteristics and they also do some sort of marriage and family counseling because with that we get more many n number of problems nowadays because of the relationship issue and next and next uh, Sub field is the educational psychology. Educational psychologists are concerned with the concepts of education. So this includes the study of motivation, intelligence, personality, use of rewards and punishment, size of the class, expectations from the students, the personality traits, the effectiveness of the teacher, the to the teacher student relationship, the attitude and etc. It is also concerned with designing tests to evaluate students' performance. We also help in designing the curriculum to make learning more interesting and enjoyable to children. Educational psychologists uh, is used in elementary and secondary schools, planning and supervising even special education, training teachers, 
counseling students who have behavioral problems or some other problems assisting students with learning difficulties such as poor writing or poor handwriting reading skills and also lack of concentration the next sub field of psychology is social psychology this studies the effect of society on the thoughts feelings and actions of people so because we all know that we are influenced by our people in and around us right we all we try to mimic the behavior of the next person right so in this context social psychology plays a very vital role so our behavior is not only a result of just our personality and predisposition that is mainly genetic but this social and environmental factors also affect the way we think we act we do and so on Social psychologists conduct experiments to determine the effects of various groups, how people behave in groups, how groups is influencing the behavioral pattern, thinking pattern, the cognition, the thought processes, the group pressures, and also in- investigate the effect of propaganda, persuasion, conformity, conflict, integration, race, prejudice, and aggression. because we, with all this people tend to learn new behaviors from the people in and around the society these investigations explain many incidents that were, that would otherwise be difficult to understand so social psychologists work largely in colleges and universities and also in other organizations and next sub field is quite interesting it is industrial and organizational psychology this is a this private and public organization applies psychology to management and employee training supervision of personnel improve communication within the organization counseling employees and reduce industry waste that we can say in organization in industrial sectors not only the psychological effects of working attitude of the employees is considered but also it, it helps to reduce the absenteeism and to increase the productivity of the employees Our next branch we call it as experimental psychology because we love doing experiments and you know psychological experiments are very very fascinating and we all love to know more about the experiment. So it's a branch to study the process of sensing. See, we have got five different senses and the experiment is the sensing, perceiving things around that, learning, thinking and it's all done by using scientific method. The outcome of the experimental psychology is cognitive psychology which focuses on studying higher mental processes including thinking, knowing, reasoning, judging and decision making because we have even cognitive psychology and experimental psychology together because all these subfields are actually interrelated. And next we have got this environmental psychology which is actually quite interesting to know because it focuses on the relationship between people and the physical and social surroundings because even now it may right we are actually having a higher temperature and that also influences our behavior i hope everybody will definitely support me on this ground so for example the density of population and relationship with the crime the noise pollution and harmful effects the influence of overcrowding upon lifestyle all these are quite examples of studying about the environmental psychology And here comes one more discipline or the discipline of psychology which is labeled as psychology of women right so this concentrates on psychological factors of women's behavior and development which is quite challenging i guess you all say as to it because understanding women is not that easy i i hope so. it focuses on a broad range of issues such as discrimination against women the possibility of sexual differences in the brain of men and women the effect of hormones on behavior and the causes of violence against women fear of success outsmarting nature of women with respect to men in various accomplishments so yes so this is one of the very 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 new sub field of psychology and we have got sports and exercise psychology it studies the role of motivation in sports social aspects of sports physiological issues like importance of training on muscle development the coordination between eye and hand the muscular coordination in fact in field training and knowing the math 
So next is cognitive psychology and it studies thinking, memory, language, development, perception, imagery and other mental processes in order to deep into higher human mental functions like insight, creativity and problem solving. So next we have got the other subfield called forensic psychology which is which is actually very in a very amazing state in the Indian context. So, forensic psychology offers a unique opportunity to apply psychology to the benefits of legal organization, especially pertaining to specific concerns or business testimony. Professionals in this field utilize these skills to look deep into the psyche of criminals and figure out the intent behind the crime. This helps to defend the current term and age of evidence to be rendered. So, with the onset of this new era, forensic psychology is expected to influence. Policy makers, but the one the saddest part is this forensic psychology relationship. Hope uh, this will this scope of forensic psychology will also extend in near future. And uh, next we have got cross cultural psychology, which is a scientific study of human behavior and natural processes, including both their variability and invariance and other diverse cultural conditions because. But nowadays, uh, cross-cultural marriage is quite common and, and we get more problems related to relationship issues and that's how cross-cultural psychology have a better scope in psychology to understand the human behavior in order to describe, to control and to prevent behavioral patterns as a such the major goals of our psychology. So next we will move to career scope. So the very first question people ask is there a career scope in psychology? What is the career scope? I can tell me, I can proudly say job opportunities are endless for a psychologist. The employment in psychology is expected to rise in few years. So actually this is actually a very good career scope is available for our psychology discussion. Most of the job opportunities will open in the screening and in psychology due to more demand in healthcare centers hospitals, mental health centers, social health services, and school really the growth of employment in psychology sector. And with increase in the aging population, mental problems, physical problems, the need of psychology is increasing. There are a number of sectors offered for the psychology degree holders, so you can work in various psychology departments and different sectors also. They can easily find in jobs in private and government sectors also. Psychologists mostly take up for jobs in various universities, colleges, schools, hospitals, clinics, government agencies, and etc. So, countries like Europe, USA, and New Zealand and Australia are the popular places for job opportunities, especially for psychologists. So, what, where are the recruitment areas for psychologists? So, here is a list of recruitment areas for people who have a psychology. Specialist of or for the psychologist. The first important area is the rehabilitation centers, psychological research centers where they do various researchers and also helps in the policy making, advertising industry, how to promote the product, in teaching where you can be a teacher to a higher to a higher secondary level or to a college level, various welfare organizations and you can do psychological assessment and testing and do the diagnosis and to rule out, rule out what is wrong with that particular individual and to plan the intervention, research establishments like DRDO, develop the prevention programs, work on various NGOs in forensic sciences to rule out. That's why I said forensic psychology, we are, we are actually it's a new field emerging in Indian context. You can, you can work in universities, schools, child and youth guidance centers also. So finally, what are the duties of a psychologist? Right, to so identify and research human behaviors and emotional patterns. It seems to be a very single line, but it is not that easy to identify and research the human behavior and emotion pattern because it does not it, it is not very subjective because it doesn't, it is not that easy to measure the emotional pattern of the people because the emotion keep on changing depending upon your situation and the context. And using tests and assessment to aid in diagnosing a mental health condition for the patient, so we can work as a team to provide the diagnostic aspect of the person in order to build a good 
intervention strategy to to figure out what is wrong with that individual and to make it quality of life better they gather the information through observation interviews surveys and other methods they use so such organizational psychological emotional behavior diagnosis disorders using information collected from the research study often long term counseling for those patients suffering from mental health disorder i guess you know because just now we had a whole discussion for this counseling because counseling doesn't happen in a very not we still have these counseling but but still right counseling means some time to rule out what is exactly the problem is all about so that's why we label it as a long term counseling process in order to 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 rule out the adjacent issues with that particular individual and to increase the quality of life and share the problems of the patients and make conclusions because disseminating the information is also art we can't just like that disseminate the information because it needs help it you have to think twice and the world should be appropriate in order to disseminate the information write reports articles research study and to share the collected data and it also studies you have we are supposed to study the behavior and the brain function because brain plays a very vital role in controlling the behavior of the so i guess you do those i could go endless i could i could just gather few of the duties of the psychology and what are the job profiles available and what does the job designation people tend to call you as you can be called as a psychologist psychotherapist counselor teacher consultant and clinical psychologist psychiatrist psychiatrist doesn't come under psychologist but they come under a part team of a group of psychologists clinical social worker psychiatric nurse because i see many people who are into nursing take up a psychology and they become a psychiatric nurse and the most fascinating is for the art therapist because with art we try to explore the emotions of the person and also the psychiatrist. and when i talk about job profiles let me also tell you about the pay package for psychologists psychologists with mc and phd degree on a very handsome salary package the salary of a psychologist varies upon various factors such as education experience area of specialization work in area etc psychologists are highly rewarding and lucrative field of study a psychologist salary depends upon many factors like the job qualification experience professional psychologists earn mc and phd on quite handsomely and those engaged in private practice also have a scope for earning this is just a statistic it, it may vary in the field you see your starting salary can range between 1.7 lakh per annum to 1.2 lakh per annum as one exception to the machine and specialist in that she can earn more so this uh, I, i'm just telling you the average pay package for the psychologist in a single company so how do i become a psychologist yeah So the first step is to become a psychologist. You will need to cover up the entire degree level, a bachelor in psychology, post graduation degree, and then a PhD degree. The psychology program extends to four-year undergraduate degree, in addition to four to six years doctoral degree. Many universities in India offer various courses for bachelor to PhD degree level. So bachelor courses we have three years of duration. We have BS in psychology, BA Hall in psychology, Bachelor of Arts in psychology. Master courses, which is of two-year duration, we have Master of Arts in Psychology, Master of Arts in Applied Psychology, Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology, and MSc in that is Master of Science in Psychology. And we have doctoral courses, we have Doctor of Philosophy in Psychology and MPhil in Psychology. So, what are the educational requirements to pursue these degrees? Students can apply for bachelor courses after the twelfth standard. For postgraduate, that is, for master courses in psychology, you, you should have hold a graduate degree in psychology from any recognized university. For MPhil and PhD courses, students students should have completed a master's degree in psychology. Students wishing to pursue a career in psychology can bring with taking up an undergraduate course in psychology. However, to begin practicing in psychology, students will need to take up a master's program in psychology. Followed by some additional qualification. I really want to stress this because people who just completed a three-year course or a six-month certification course climb them to be a psychologist. It is 
it is not highly appreciated right if you have to begin practicing a psychology then you need to take up the master program and follow this and additional qualification psychology is not only interesting career to pursue the future but also hold promises of great opportunities for those who follow it so what are the personal skills needed to be a psychologist so here are the list a very analytical mind for diagnosis excellent communication skills to effectively counsel patients who suffer from various behavioral issues a lot of patients with grants and psychologists they believe to remain cool under pressure when dealing with particularly different things or their challenging patients so i guess i should actually more emphasize on this because that also influences the behavioral aspect of the psychology and also a genuine passion for helping people overcome their mental and behavioral challenges and finally compassion combined with drive are the two most important skills need with this with this we shall be personal skills in a psychology Before winding up, let me go to some myths and misconceptions about psychology. People say psychology is easy. I should explain why it is not easy. This, this misconception is that the first one is felt for many students as they struggle to the general psychology courses because I'm handled the general psychology paper. Why do some people mistakenly believe that psychology is simple and easy? One reason might be because they tend to assume that since they have so much personal experience with human behavior they will naturally be experts on the subject fortunately just because psychology is challenging doesn't mean that it isn't accessible to anyone who might take an interest in it while there are might be a learning curve you can you can definitely succeed in psychology classes with effort and determination so psychology is not that easy to pursue unless and until you have the genuine passion to pursue it And the second goal says psychology is just a common sense. You are psychology is just a common sense. Why to need a degree to a PhD level to become a psychologist? But it is not. After hearing about the latest psychological research, people tend to have an of course type of response. Of course, that's true. Why do people even waste their time researching stuff that just common sense? People sometimes explain. That's the thing about common sense. Just because something seems like it should be true, doesn't necessarily mean that's it. Yeah. So researchers are able to take some of these questions and assumptions about human behavior and test them scientifically, assessing the truth or falsehood in some of our commonly held beliefs about ourselves. By using scientific method, experimenters can investigate human issues objectively and fairly. So psychology is not just a common sense as people say. Next is you can become a therapist just with a bachelor's degree. Definitely not. In order to become a practicing therapist, you will need at least a master's degree and a field such as psychology, counseling, or social work, or even advanced psychiatric nursing. There are many opportunities to work in field of mental health at the bachelor's level. But these positions tend to be considered only as the entry level. So you cannot become a therapist just with your bachelor's degree. You cannot open your own private therapy center with just a bachelor's degree. It is also important to be aware that the professional title psychologist is a regulated term. In order to call yourself a psychologist, you need to earn a doctorate degree in psychology, complete a supervised internship. And pass a skill license exam. The fourth misconception: psychologists get paid lots of money to listen to people talk. So listening to people talk is not that easy. People say, right? Get a lot of money, but that's not true. Certainly, some psychologists are very well compensated for the work. But the notion that they are just passively sitting back, doodling on a yellow notebook with the clients ramble on could be further from the truth. Traditional talk therapy is only one technique that therapists might use. It's certainly not a passive process. Throughout these sessions, therapists are actively engaged in listening to the client, asking questions, providing advice, and helping clients develop solutions to put into daily practice. So it's not just listening to what people just talk. Yeah. 
psychologists actually work with a wide number of professions and perform an enormous range of different duties. Salaries are just paid dramatically. Some work in the field of mental health and focus on helping people who experience psychological distress. But other professionals work in areas such as business, education, government, and also research. And the last one, most common myth is psychology isn't a real science. Another common myth is not a real science. Psychology might be relatively young science in the grand scheme of science, but it's indeed a real science. However, it is important to know that scientific psychology does not have some limitations. So human behavior can vary and change over time. So what is true in one particular environment place might not necessarily apply in different situations, settings, cultures, or even the society. So psychology is a real science. We use only scientific methods to prove the consistency and distinctiveness of the human behavior factor. So just to summarize our first part facts about psychology, psychology study of behavior in the mind. There are different types of cycles such as cognitive, forensic, social, and developmental psychology. A person with condition that affects the mental health may benefit from assessment and treatment with the psychologist. A psychologist may offer treatment and that focuses on behavioral adaptation. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor who is more likely to focus on medical management of mental health issues because there is always a misconception that psychologists are psychiatrists and psychiatrists are psychologists. Psychologists and psychiatrists are two different people. Psychiatrist is a person who is a medical doctor who focuses focus more on managing managing the disorder to medical matters. But psychologists do give the therapy and also do the counseling. And if they are they know that have the license to really prescribe any sort of medicine to the people. So this is my contact details. I'm Priya Mahesh. You can see my mobile number, email. I have a blog on positive jokes. Here is a blog ID. So do contact me for the for me for your personal questions or anything related to psychology. And thank you all for your patience.